Earlier today, friends and family said their final goodbyes to a man who drowned in Lucky Peak Reservoir. Nonprofit Bruce's legacy recovered Jose Nunez's body from Lucky Peak one week ago yesterday. And today we're hearing from Bruce's legacy about those recovery efforts. I also talked with Jose's daughter as well as his girlfriend. The uncertainty and lack of closure. It's been a struggle. It's been a long struggle. Those were the struggles. Jose Nunez's daughter, Andrea, his girlfriend, Sarah Gracia Mendoza, and his loved ones dealt with for 22 days. Sarah says the 47-year-old got off the boat in Lucky Peak and into the water and never came up. The Ada County Sheriff's Office searched for Jose for days, but eventually suspended their efforts, which is when Sarah and Jose's loved ones started a GoFundMe page to raise money to pay for nonprofit Bruce's legacy to travel from Wisconsin to Boise and search for Jose. We offer this service to families and, and departments that are looking for drowning victims. We utilize the towfish type sonars. These are four foot long torpedo type devices that are being towed about 15 feet off the bottom. And they uh, translate a, a very amazing image uh, to us at, on the boat. Keith Cormican is the founder of Bruce's Legacy, which he named in memory of his brother, Bruce. He says they also have a remote operated vehicle that can dive as deep as 1,600 feet into the water, grab a hold of victims, and bring them to the surface without ever having to enter the water. It, it was a hard area to search. Um, there, there are, uh, you know, very, you know, a lot of variation in depth, which makes it pretty hard. Some, a lot of drop-offs, uh, a lot of rock, rock Air, rocky areas, rock walls, um, there's some trees there. Sarah and Andrea's mother were also out at Lucky Peak every day, which Keith says added pressure to their search. He searched every avenue, every crevice. And on Monday, August 22nd, Bruce's legacy found Jose. The same day when Keith's brother Bruce passed away in a recovery operation as a firefighter 27 years ago. So that was pretty, pretty unique uh, for us to have that, um, have that recovery done on that date. I get the feeling that um, he does watch over us what we're doing. And, uh, and I don't know, I, I it, it certainly happened on that day. So. Bruce's legacy, helping loved ones like Jose's find closure. My legs became weak. I could barely stand. I started crying and I was just screaming and like, I was just so excited because I was just exhausted from weeks and weeks of search. Being able to help these people uh, in their darkest moments of their lives um, is, is, is very rewarding. It, it's, it truly is. Um, uh, to get the hugs from them, um, on, on that day, we, we got on the dock and and Sarah came down and, and, and gave us, you know, gave both of us the biggest hugs uh, that you could ever imagine. And, yeah. As Andrea gets ready to turn 13 next month, she says her dad's smile is what she'll miss the most. It was very funny at times. Um, he always tried to be the best at everything. And Keith tells me in the nine years he's been doing this, they've recovered 44 people, now including Jose. They operate off of donations and only ask the families to cover their travel expenses. And we'll have more information about this at ktv.com. But Keith also says not all searches end in a recovery, and that's the reality of this and the most difficult part of his job. Jose's loved ones also tell me that they want to thank Bruce's legacy, all of the volunteers, and everyone who donated to their GoFundMe.